tripods, love them or hate them, they are part of your anatomy as a landscape photographer. And they come in all shapes and sizes, all kinds of brands. Chances are you've spent a few hundred dollars on your tripod, but I'm gonna show you the tripods that I use, the reasons why I like them, the things that I love, the things that I don't love. And I'm gonna start with a giveaway. So this piece of absolute crap is a Manfrotto tripod. And I used to be a Manfrotto guy, but no longer because I found that these ball heads have a tendency to seize on you. And this is the second ball head from Manfrotto to completely seize. So I'm done, I'm done with Manfrotto. So this piece of crap could be all yours if you sign up to my mailing list and enter yourself into a prize draw and I'll somehow figure out a way to randomly pull a name out of that hat and if that name is yours this complete pile of rubbish is yours for free plus shipping because this is Canada right so shipping is outrageously expensive here so you're, if you want this and you win it you're gonna have to pay for me to send this to you it used to be a brilliant tripod one thing I'll say for Manfrotto is even though this has now let me down, it's the sturdiest tripod I have ever used. I've stood in really raging rivers with white water. And this thing has just stood solid because it's not carbon fiber. The whole thing is aluminium, it's quite heavy. Um, as you can see, it's scarred to buggery. This has been all around the planet. There's a little piece missing there. Um, this has been in Death Valley. This has been to Thailand, Cambodia, all over the States, all over Canada, uh, the Faroe Islands, Scotland. So it's, it's seen some miles and it does have a bit of sentimental value. But yeah, if you've got some lube and you're a bit handy and you can fix this thing up, this will be a brilliant tripod for the right person. Are you gonna sign it for the winner? Yeah, I'll sign it. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll sign it. I'll put. I'll scribble my name on. That'll increase the value by at least five cents. <laughs> You're selling yourself short, man. I was thinking like two, two fifty, maybe even three dollars, somewhere in that range. <laughs> You're gonna say two hundred and fifty? <laughs> you cheeky <laughs> bugger. Brutal. Yeah. So that's the Manfrotto. This, this, uh, this was my tripod, but it's done now. So let's chuck that. <laughs> so what's next? All oh, right. So this is a Benro TGP27C. I mean, the, the marketing department really needs to give themselves a pat on the back with such a catchy name for this tripod. I mean, what are they thinking? Like, call it the Staff of Justice or the, the <laughs> Pole of Amazement. Anything but t some serial number. It's total stupid uh, marketing, but uh, this is the last tripod that I bought and I think I paid about 500 Canadian dollars for this about a year ago and I love this tripod. Now I swore blind years ago that I would never buy a tripod that has, has twisties but I've tried all kinds of tripods. I've tried very very expensive ones, I've tried low end ones and out of all of the ones that have twisties these feel the best. Uh, they, they don't seize up on me that much apart from like minus 27 Celsius. And it's a very lightweight tripod. Now the thing I like about this is it's got one of those um, elbow systems that tilts 45 degrees so you can get very, very close to the ground. But because it's, it's got a central stem, I can also get very, very high up. I'm not sure what the actual height on this thing, but I think it's, I think it's over six feet. And that's usually what I want to do. I, I usually either want to get super high or really, really low to the ground. And most tripods, they're either one or the other, but this lets you do both. So I, I really like that. And it's very lightweight and it's very sturdy. So this is the last tripod that I paid money for. So I highly recommend that. I wasn't too sold on the Benro ball heads. Uh, and I think my ideal setup would be this tripod with perhaps the three-legged thing Airhead 360, which I'll show you in a bit. That combo of that ball head on this tripod, to me, is probably the ultimate. So that's that's my Benro, that's the one that I use quite regularly. Next up. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, there's a, there's a Spasmo rocket on there. Did you see oh, that video? No, I did not. You didn't see that? Have you oh, subscribed I'm to my sorry. channel? <laughs> so what's this one called? Brian. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. So this is my travel tripod. This is a three-legged thing, Brian. 
So the three-legged thing have <laughs> clearly got a bit more going on up there when it comes to their marketing department and what they call their tripods. I'm not sure why it's called a Brian, but I'd rather that than uh, a serial number. It's a bit more catchy and at least I could say to you, oh yeah, I've got a Brian. People will remember that. So the reason why I like this one, um, <clears throat> again, it's very, very small. If I go like this and pack it down, I'll sh this, this is how small it gets and it'll fit in your suitcase. That's a good selling point, actually, if you're going to be traveling with it. That's fantastic. Oh. I do a lot of traveling and it's a nightmare trying to pack things onto flights and things like that. Yeah, I mean, aside from the Spasmo rocket there, you can see this thing is it's tiny. Now, the reason why I like it is it's got all of these telescoping legs and a telescoping central column. And yes, they're not super stable because the more telescoping parts you've got, the thinner they are, the less stable it is. So this is not something I would use in a raging white river and expect to get stability or, or even a windy mountaintop. But for standard, uh, if you're going to a beach or if, you, if you're going into cities or anywhere where you're not ex experiencing extreme weather, for something that will fit in your suitcase, this is brilliant. And it goes up to almost seven feet of height. Wow. So out of all my tripods, this is the smallest is the tallest, which I think is brilliant. I forget what this costs, but I'll, I'll go like this and the price will magically appear on, <laughs> on your forehead. <laughs> Sweet. But I think it's, if memory serves me right, I think it was round about 300 US dollars, which for a very tall uh, tripod that is super tiny and lightweight and has a very good ball head, actually. So this is also my B-roll B camera. So I, I take this out on all my vlogs and I use this for, for my Osmo Pocket and I'll put it on the Spasmo Rocket here and it's it's a pretty sturdy ball head. It's very good, it's got a bubble level on it, uh, Arca Swiss plate uh, attachments. It's it's a really good tripod for the money. So that's, that's my recommendation for either a second tripod, like your B-roll tripod, or a travel tripod if you're flying somewhere and you need something small but versatile. Chuck that. What else we got? Oh, uh. Okay, this is the three-legged thing Winston, and this is, I think, their, I don't know if this is their highest end model, but it's definitely one of the higher end models from a three-legged thing, which is a, a British designed company. I'm not sure where they're made, but they're designed in, in Great Britain, so I've got to show a little bit of support for my, my guys. Um, what I like about this tripod is mainly the ball head. This is the Airhead 360. What I love about this is this rotating piece at the top. So once you've got your tripod perfectly level, if you want to do a pano, you just turn this. It's great for doing uh, horizontal uh, panoramas. I have noticed though that uh, when I've had the ball head vertical in this, in this mode, there, there tends to be a little bit of creep if you don't get that super, super tight. So you've got to make sure that it's very, very tight so that that doesn't start to rotate on you. But the chances are if you're using an L bracket, that's never going to be a problem. Um, I really like this ball head. It's very, very sturdy. It's, it's very well made. I like this, this, I like this knob, um, <laughs> this tensioner, this lock knob. It just feels good. And I think that's something I would be able to grip in very, very cold temperatures with gloves on and that's what I'm always looking for with these tripods is will it will it function in extreme conditions and still offer me functionality and comfort this one I think it will it also comes with this really cool tool this sort of carabiner which I use on my camera bag to also strap in my down jacket but it's got the tools here so that you can tighten up the legs and use that there to tighten up the, the plate that you put on your uh, your camera base so that's that's quite useful not just for the tripod, but for other things, other accessories. Okay, so the only thing that I don't like about this tripod, I, I love that it's very, very sturdy, but I found that <clears throat> these um, screws here for pulling out the legs, I find that, that they're really, really wide. And if I had some big chunky gloves on, that could be a bit uncomfortable to grip hold of and then, you know, telescope. So I would prefer it if those weren't quite so chunky and, and complicated looking. 
more like the Benro. The Benro is a bit more streamlined and I've, I've found using this out in the field, I've found that sometimes I'm never quite sure, did I tighten it? Is it is it still loose? And often I've found that I haven't tightened it up properly and I, I have to go back and readjust it, which can be a bit time consuming. So I think that's my only gripe about this tripod. It feels very, very well made. It feels like it's very high quality, but that's my only gripe is, is these, uh, these screws they're not my favourite, I'll, I'll have to say that. Uh, but it also looks pretty cool and it does get up to quite a good height. And you can, I think with this one, I think you can remove this central column and get very, very close to the ground. So it's it's kind of ticks all the boxes except for the, the ease of use on the, the leg extenders. And I think that's about, I think it's about 700 US dollars, including the ball head, which I absolutely love. So I think what I'm going to do with this is take this ball head off and put that on the Benro tripod, which is my favourite, and that combination of the two will make the perfect cocktail. Finally, for this one. Ooh. Now lastly, this is the tripod that you've probably seen already in my videos and in some of Uncle Grumpy's videos. This is the tripod from the Colorado Tripod Company. And what I will say about this straight off the bat, overall, I think in terms of value for money out of everything that I've shown you here, this is by far the best value for money for a standard tripod. Now the smaller um, three-legged thing, Brian, uh, is, is less, costs less than this uh, and is a bit more versatile, but I wouldn't want to use that as my everyday tripod simply because it's just not as sturdy as this. This is super sturdy and I think uh, the tripod is about 300 US dollars and the ball head, which, and I cannot believe that they're managing to do this for $100. I think it's, I think it's $99 for the ball head. So I don't think you can get a better ball head for that kind of money. It's absolutely amazing that they've been able to do that. Uh, carbon fiber legs. What I really love about this tripod, the tripod itself, is when you uh, extend that and then you want to bring it back down to a different position, it automatically ratchets like that. Um, a small feature, but it's kind of nice, especially in a very affordable tripod. The only thing that I don't like about this one, and they've addressed this in their production model, is this is quite short. You know, I'm not the tallest guy, and this isn't high enough for me. Um, so it doesn't get you up to those heights that I usually need, but they're making a, a, newer, mo a newer model that has longer legs or um, a longer stem. I'm not sure how they're doing it. And they also have a titanium version of this, which is obviously a lot lighter. And I'd love to get my hands on one of those. But uh, yeah, I, I really, for the money, I absolutely love this tripod. And if I was, if I was, you know, in the market as a beginner, maybe, and this is my first tripod, this is probably the one that I would go for, uh, simply because it's got the build quality, it's got the stability, and the price that you that you want as a beginner. Um, if it had that height factor, then it, that would fix all of the all of the problems. So the the production model is slightly different to this. I've um, I've spoken to the guys at Colorado Tripod Company, and they have this on this one. This is like a prototype. They have the tensioner inside of this nut here, this grub screw. But on the production model, they've separated that, and it has its own dedicated little uh, screw. So there's no uh, there's no problems with that. But so for someone like me as a beginner, that's the one that you would say I should go with. Yeah, because as a beginner, you don't want to spend. Uh, you know, thousand dollars or more. It's so expensive getting set up. So yeah. if I can get like those good quality pieces for less money, then I'm super thrilled. Absolutely. And the thing for me is with tripods is I kind of have like this mental limit of seven hundred dollars maximum because as a professional, um, I, I can't afford to be spending thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars on a tripod and a ball head that I know because I'm a professional, I'll trash it. Like, I'm out all the time. I'm in extreme conditions, I'm in rivers. I, I, if I'm climbing, often I'll, I'll have to throw my tripod to a spot where I'm gonna end up because it's just too cumbersome or, or dangerous to have it strapped to my back and potentially getting caught on tree branches and stuff like that. So often I'll carry my tripod and I'll just throw it to wherever I need to be next. And so, my tripods don't last longer than two years, so I don't really want to be spending 1500 or more 
around about that per tripod. So I have this sort of $700 limit so that if, okay, let's just say this is a $300 tripod and I smash something up on the tripod itself, well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the end of the world financially, whereas if it was really expensive, I, that, that's gonna hurt, right? Um, whereas a lot of my students, they don't put their equipment through the same amount of punishment, so they can justify, you know, spending a bit more on something that might last them five or eight years, you know, whereas I'll be lucky if it lasts a year. You know, I destroy these things. <laughs> And some lucky winner is gonna get one of those old used tripods. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so sign up. Yeah, with battle scars included. <laughs> okay, that's it. So if you're interested in buying any of those tripods or ball heads, I've put a link in the description below. Um, some of them are affiliate links, some of them aren't. So on the affiliate links, obviously if you buy one, I'll get a little bit of a, a kickback on there. It won't cost you any more money, but it will keep me in chocolate bars. <laughs>